Hey everyone, my name is Josh and welcome back to your fourth Snimmels package and news update. We have a lot of news to get into in today's video, but first, if you would like to receive two free socks from Weeble valued up to $2,300, make sure to claim them by clicking my link, which you will find in the description box below. Okay, so it's Monday, we're at the start of a new week, and Democratic leaders hope to get moving towards wrapping up two major pieces of legislation. By the end of this week, Democrats hope to pass both the bipartisan infrastructure bill as well as Joe Biden's Build Back Better plan. Over the weekend, Bernie Sanders and Joe Manchin discussed Medicare expansion, where the two are still at odds over the issue. Last week, Democrats were seemingly able to reach a framework deal on reconciliation, but it's still unclear whether or not Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema also approve of it. This week, we should begin to get a much better idea of how things will play out. Bernie Sanders joined CNN's State of the Union yesterday where he talked about some of the issues that they're currently facing. First, he was asked about having to give up several of his priorities in the Build Back Better plan. You have said there are major gaps in this plan. Several, several of your priorities, paid leave, uh, dental and vision for Medicare, giving the government power to negotiate lower prescription drug prices for seniors, that's not in the deal. Uh, you saw that House progressives well, endorsed... Not Doris, the compromise, do you? Well, it's not in the bill yet, but what I can tell you, Donna, we are working right now. I spent all of yesterday on the telephone. Look, we are paying the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. Uh, the pharmaceutical industry has spent hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars to make certain that Americans pay 10 times more for some drugs than the Canadians or the Mexicans do. That fight continues. Uh, and the fight to expand Medicare. Look, poll after poll shows that the American people understand it is not acceptable that elderly people have teeth in their mouth that are rotting, they can't digest their food, they, can't, they don't have the vision that they need mm -hmm. uh, in order to read a newspaper. So we are continuing that effort. Sanders says Americans are paying a lot more money than other countries for prescription drugs, and in his mind, and many others, that's just simply unacceptable. These are all things Sanders still hopes to see at the end of the day in the final package. Sanders has then asked if all those things that he wants doesn't end up in the final bill, if he would still accept it. If, it, if you don't succeed in that progress, will you support the, the framework as it currently stands, what the White House released at the end it, of the week? Well, it, all I will tell you is we have a very, very strong bill, uh, and it deals with uh, the fact that uh, we are going to start paying attention to the needs of working parents, continue that $300. We're going to build affordable housing. Uh, we're going to make sure that elderly people and people with disabilities can stay at home rather than be forced into a nursing home, et cetera. We're going to demand that the wealthiest people in this country start paying their fair share of taxes. So is that, sounds like that's a yes. You if you're not successful, more, you will It's a very good bill. No, no, but I am right now, I can tell you, I have worked yesterday, we're working today, we're going to work tomorrow to strengthen that bill. It is outrageous that we continue to pay the highest prices in the world for prescription well, I want to drugs. I ask you about that. And that one out of four Americans cannot afford the prescriptions that their doctors uh, write. That let's, is not acceptable. Let's... So he doesn't really give a clear answer, but it seems like he would still support it regardless. Senator Sanders has then asked about Kirsten Sinema's views on not allowing the government to negotiate lower drug prices for seniors due to the fact that it could stifle innovation in the pharmaceutical industry. Talk about that, because that is one of the priorities that right now is on the cutting room floor, allowing the government to negotiate lower drug prices for seniors. I've heard you talk about right. this hundreds of times, probably. <laughs> um, I, I was told that Senator Kirsten Sinema says she opposes it because it stifles innovation in the pharmaceutical industry. <laughs> what, what do you make of that? And what conversations you're saying you're working on trying to change this, are you talking to her? Do you think that she is um, convincible? Look, this is not about Senator Sinema or Senator Manchin. It's about 50 senators and the outrage. Yeah, but they make up the right, 50 senators. So do, so do we all. But here is the bottom line. Last year, pharmaceutical industry made $50 billion in profit. Last year, the top CEOs made hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in outrageous levels of compensation. All right. So the issue is right now, the pharmaceutical industry is doing everything that it can to make sure that one out of four Americans is unable to afford 
the prescriptions that their doctors write. People are dying. The cost of insulin is totally 10 times more in this country than Will you vote for a bill that doesn't include that? anyone tells me... You're, you're talking about me? how important it is. Would you vote for a bill that doesn't include changing am, what you're describing as a very big problem? As soon as I leave the studio, I'm going to be going back home to get on the phone to make sure that we have it. Sanders basically talks about the agreed by CEOs in the pharmaceutical industry and says that they're doing everything that they can to ensure that one out of every four Americans can afford their medicine. So obviously there's still a pretty good size gap on the overall viewpoints of progressive Democrats like Bernie Sanders and more moderate Democrats like Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. In addition to getting the bipartisan infrastructure bill and the Build Back Better package passed through, Democrats will also have a couple more items to accomplish by the end of this month. On December 3rd, for example, government funding will once again run out. Additionally, the Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, says the debt limit will also need to be raised as well. For the past several months, Republicans have said that Democrats will need to raise the debt limit on their own, and in order to do that, they will need to do it through a separate reconciliation package. Democratic leaders, up to this point, have been opposed to that idea, seeing that Republicans are hypocrites for not helping to raise the debt limit, given that they've been responsible for creating more debt in recent years. Still though, it doesn't look like Republicans will help Democrats raise the debt limit, since Democrats are moving alone in these recent reconciliation bills. Janet Yellen did say recently that she would be fine with Democrats raising the debt ceiling on their own through reconciliation, and it looks like that's going to be the only way they'll be able to get it done. Okay, so in some other news, even with Democrats having to remove so many measures from the Build Back Better plan, progressives are now pushing Joe Biden once again to cancel student debt. In a recent post on Instagram, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez posted, I think given how much Build Back Better has been slashed, there is more opportunity than ever to bring the heat on Biden to cancel student loans. He doesn't need Manchin's permission for that, and now that his agenda is thinly sliced, he needs to step up his executive action game and show commitment to deliver for people. We need to get this done. We need to organize and prepare actions now because the showdown will be in late January when payments are supposed to kick back up. So in AOC's mind, Biden does not need congressional approval to cancel student loan debt. No, in her mind, Biden has the right through executive order to cancel thousands of dollars in student loan debt. Out of curiosity, in the comment section below, let me know whether or not you would support President Biden canceling student loan debt through an executive order. Alrighty, so on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, if you would like to receive a couple of free stocks from Webull, make sure to quickly claim them by clicking my link in the description box below. To receive the first stock, you will need to fully open an account. Then to receive the second free stock, which will be valued up to $2,000, you'll need to make a qualifying deposit of at least $5. And even if you aren't all that interested in investing or continuing to invest at this point in time, you can always sell the free stocks you receive and transfer that money, however much they're worth, right back to your bank account. So free stocks or free money, it's completely up to you. So once again, I hope everyone has a great and safe rest of their day. If you did enjoy the content in this video and you found it helpful in whatever way, I would definitely appreciate it if you go ahead and give this video a like, a big thumbs up. That does definitely help out with the YouTube algorithm. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.